Venga. I, uh, I apologize for the formality, Mr. Brown, but you're my first real killer. You, but you can smell this halfway to Denver. down the hole. like a stuck pig, says Dr. McLean, who believes Brown to be insane. What the hell was your point? It makes it look like I can't keep a man alive in my own jail. Shit. Small comfort for Eben Campbell, also known as McTooth, disemboweled in cold blood before women and children in the most brutal slaying in Fort Benton history. Silence. Silence in the court. Gentlemen, order, please. Quiet. Thank you very much. Thank you for your testimony, Sheriff. You may stand down. John George Brown, you are accused of murdering one Eben Campbell, also known as McTooth, on the morning of May the 2nd. Do you have something in your defense? Put simply. Did you do it, or did you not do it? Sheriff, is it deaf mute? No, sir, I uh, heard him talk once. Mr. Brown, should you continue to deny us the pleasure of your conversation, I shall instruct the jury to find you guilty. And you can explain yourself to the Almighty in approximately one hour. Quiet, or I'll clear the court. What do we have here? My name is Olivia Delaunay Brown. Sit down. Come on, now. Order, I say. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Stay down. Get that man on, back where he belongs. Come on, boy. Sheriff, put that thing down before it goes off. Listen to me. Please. Keep this up, Brown, and I will jail your family for contempt. Hold on now, Mr. Brown. Hold on. I beg you, sir. Let me speak to my wife. Mr. Brown? You are on trial for murder. You will address the court, or you will remain silent forevermore. Very well. I will address the court.
tell you what happened to me. From the beginning. So that you know it all. I was once a junior officer in the British Army. No, I will not listen to A commission you. purchased for me by my grandmother. Bridget Sophia Brown. All what I went through to... What you went through to put me there. Sure, and I know it by heart, like Grace at supper. If your poor father and mother were alive today, they... If father were alive today, he'd say, go to it, son. There's nothing for you here. Don't waste your young life away. Go to British Columbia. That's what he'd say. Mm. Times are changing. That's right, Grandma. Men don't earn promotions today. They buy them. But in the new world, men are equal. And it's gold that makes them so. Oh, is it now? Equal as animals scratching in the dirt. And out of the dirt rises a gentleman. You'll see, Grandma. I'm going across the sea, and I'm coming back a gentleman. I came to America. I came from Panama through to the Northwest in 1863, accompanied by my friend, Arthur Vaux. L'homme est né libre, et partout il est dans le fer. Who said that? Oh, for the love of God, you know, I don't have French. Man is born free, but everywhere he is in chains. Who said that? Man is born free, but everywhere he is in chains. I hate this stupid game. I'll give you a clue. The natural man. That's a clue. Oh, come on, Arthur. Play along, will you? And cheer up. Cheer up. John. It's been three weeks since I was dry. The vermin are better fed than I am. And it's your fault. My fault. Did you know the British Columbia Territories is eight times the size of France? I have noticed. Hey, look. What do you know? Perhaps that gentleman can tell us the way to the gold fields. Come on. John, for God's sake, be polite. Uh, sorry for the inconvenience, sir, but uh, how far are we from Williams Creek? I've been waiting for you to come back. I beg your pardon, sir? Sneaky bugger. Pretend you don't know me. I swear to God, I'll blow you to kingdom come. Sir, there's a misunderstanding here. Sneaking up on a man's camp. Oh, I know you of old, Roger. Brown, actually. I'll kill you for what you've done to me, you lying bastard! Yes, of course. I do apologize for the inconvenience. Good God. Look at the time. Huh? 4.30. I'd had no idea it was so late. Did you know it was so late? Terribly sorry, sir. Duty calls. I must take my leave of you. Get out of here. One of these days shall be the death of both of us. All right, all right. <laughs> How much longer? I don't... Did you hear that? What now? The pipes. Highland pipes. Ugliest sound on earth. There he is. John, I hope this isn't another one of your little visits. <laughs> Excuse me, sir. I say, excuse me, sir, but are we near Williams Creek? There's no need to shout, laddie. I can hear you. Ah, you've arrived. Arrived? 
Look at you. Two young princes with the gold dust in your eyes. Out to seek your fortune on the far edges of the world. God, you remind me of myself when I was young. Campbell is the name, Eben Campbell. Better known as McTooth. <laughs> Williams Creek, lads, the golden city, where a man can pull $15,000 in an afternoon, spend every penny of it that same night, and go out the next morning ready for more. High adventure, lads. Life lived to the fullest. When I heard about the gold fields... You imagine something shinier, perhaps? Yes, sir. Then affront yourself, laddie. This is the shiniest place in the world. Of course, to the naked eye, first impressions can be less impressive. Where is everybody? After the gold, laddie. <laughs> gentlemen, gather round, gentlemen. I personally vouch for these animals, lovingly nourished with the finest feed in the empire. Supply and demand come together in the free market transaction, Letty. A rare opportunity. Shall we start the bidding at 500 apiece? Quiet! $500? That's a fine-looking pig, my prince. Gentlemen, gentlemen, don't be coy. Are you short of funds? Pull your resources for a group purchase of the finest chops, loins, and hawks, and eat like kings till Christmas. Delicious. That's Bill Barker, lads. $100,000 a month. And all the friends that money can buy. $400. <laughs> Do I hear? $450. For miles around, my pig stand are old. Twelve hundred the pair. Sold! <laughs> Dress them up. Well, if you can lay afford to eat, at least you can have a drink. <laughs> Hello, boy. Have some fun with these. Sweet crucified Jesus. John, don't encourage her. I don't intend to encourage her. See you in a few months, lad. You won't be so fussy where you put your little pecker. Madam, I would rather place my my pecker in a pool of cold vomit. <laughs> I told you not to encourage her. Here you go, Letty. Thanks. Who's that? Oh, his name is Turner. He's an American uh, gentleman. He doesn't look like a miner to me. No. You might call Mr. Turner a businessman. That was a fine-looking pig. Let me give you some friendly advice. Get close together, lads. There are winners and losers in Williams Creek. And you've no one but your friends when times get rough. And good luck to you. Uh, we're grateful for your assistance, sir. It was my pleasure, my bonny young prince. <laughs> I've started mining in partnership with an American named Jim Blessing. Jim had mined free placer gold on the telegraph line from Sutter's Creek, California, all the way to Horsefly. All right, down there, Jim. She's about there. OK, tell me when you're ready. Take her up. She's coming up. Jim had good luck finding gold, but bad luck keeping it. Lost 15,000 on a single card in a poker game the winter before. Right there. Ah. Does anyone know how to cook one of these? <laughs> Any luck? Just color. What was that? Rock. Oh. 
Nurse. John! I found gold! We're gonna be rich! <laughs> By winter, we had a small pouch of dust. Even had a few of what they call doingers. Every night, we would pour out our gold and just stare at it for hours. The sweetest sound in the world. Doing. <laughs> Where is it? Hey, you can spare something. Get out of here. Go on. Huh? I just a copper. One more time. with regret that we inform you of the passing of your paternal grandmother, Bridget Sophia Brown. Funeral services to be held at St. James Anglican Church in Istamon, Ireland. Well, now, gentlemen, I feel like something special. <laughs> Sir, what might a dog fart consist of? Whiskey, ketchup, and water, sir. Said to make your fart smell just like a dog. <clears throat> Sounds charming. And, uh, monkey piss? A tropical cooler made from rum, beer, and molasses. Makes you want to hang from a tree every time you... Very nice. It. What do you say, boys? We'll try some of that monkey piss if you don't mind. Mr. McToon, may we treat you to a small monkey piss? Hey, laddie, that you may be pleasure. Bartender, four monkey piss, if you please. They'll actually make it five. Excellent proposition, sir. Do I myself have to be witness to a monkey pissing? <laughs> Our man is lucky tonight. Very fortunate. Lads, here's to you. Cheers. 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 Did I tell you you were beautiful? Changed your tune since spring, boy. You were right, Franny. Oh, I must be out of my mind. You're here, aren't you? Me and lad, she gets lonely at Christmas. Plum pudding. I think a plum pudding. Ah, you would. Roast goose with dumplings and gravy. Guess I might as well suck on this. I've never been so lonely in my life. Oh, you're breaking my heart. All right. Mr. Brown. Short game of cards to round out the evening. Not on your life, John. No, thank you, sir. No. How about these gentlemen? I'd advise against it, Lettuce. <laughs> Fair enough. Uh, four whiskeys for the gentlemen, if you please, Ben. Thank you, sir. My pleasure. Merry Christmas. I'll, uh, 
flip you for the next round. Well, all right, I'll call him. Heads it is. It's your lucky night, sir. Four more whiskeys, Ben. And many men come here to make their fortune. All winter, they drink monkey piss. By spring, they ain't worth spit. I wonder. Man who's afraid to take a risk. What's keeping him here? Why doesn't he just run home to mama? Nobody said we weren't game, sir. Well, gentlemen, what about a quick hand? By God, John, you've raised my fighting spirit. I'm with you. Come in. What about you, laddie? It may be your lucky day. Well, come on, Arthur. It's Christmas. All right. Right. Off you go, laddie. Did I win? No, you lost. Excuse me, madam. Have fun, Lord. Mr. Brown, you take that chair. Thank you. I shovel the card, sir. You've done it again. First Panama, now this. Shut up, Arthur. One quick hand, you said. Just to round off the evening. Sweet Jesus. Wolf, stop your damn whining. You couldn't quit when we were ahead, no. You had to keep going. $500 on a pair of kings. Oh, Shut up, Arthur. Friends of yours? No matter where, it is fear, you know, forbids the robbing of a foe. But what to serve our private ends forbids the cheating of our friends. Well, I ask you, what was I to do? It was an opportunity. <laughs> <laughs> Here you go, boy. Gentlemen, care to join us for Christmas dinner? There's always room for one more. It's a strange thing, but the only way to find out what you'll do to survive is to survive. Well, that winter, we joined the boys at the butcher tent for supper, and we made it through. And next spring, the gold came back. Arthur. Yes, sir. You want a drink, Arthur? Yes, sir. All right. Well, that's To all the gold we've yet to find. To the gold. To my mama. <laughs> While we clawed our way out of our bad fortune, other men arrived, thousands of them, and their greed turned a pile of mud into a city of gold. When we made our triumphant return to Williams Creek, it was as though a hundred years had gone by. I don't know about you, but I'm in the mood for monkey piss. You talk me into it, Mr. Brown. But no carbs, I beg you. <laughs> Mr. Brown. Gladdy, 
you're a sight for these old eyes. Hello, McTooth. I was worried sick you might not make it through the winter, and here you are, please be. You're a survivor of the first water. Here's a hug for heaven's sakes. <laughs> Game of cards, gentlemen? Just to round off the evening. Easy, laddie. What's the matter, Brown? Can't take a joke? Now, lads, that's all water under the bridge. Why don't you stir your shanks over to the bar and have a nice, refreshing whiskey? All right. Aye, right, that's the spirit. I'll join you as soon as I fleece Mr. Gilchrist here. Well, banker, why don't we buy the bottle? A bottle it is, for a start. Then you can come champagne for me. Fun, Turner. Are you helping Gilchrist, Randy? Haven't seen him. That ain't what I asked you. Now, Gilchrist went pretty big last night, and I want to know if you helped him. <laughs> Randy, I'm asking you real nice now. <laughs> I did! I did! Do I look all right? You look fine. Go on. Oh, Lord. My God, but you're beautiful. Please excuse me. That was very cold. Don't be silly. I hear that line three times an hour. Yes, ma'am. But you're special. Give me a dollar and we'll dance. Somebody had better get a priest. Jesus. Jim! Yes. <laughs> 
You went safe and fast. Uh, 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 I'm gonna squish your whip back to your goddamn plum. <laughs> You've done him proud. He's a bachelor now, for sure. John? It's gone. What? The gold. Jim had it. It's gone. Give you a gym shirt, but it's in pretty bad shape. Okay. See you later, boy. Bye. There are jobs in the new government, you know, John. They say that Tory is quite civilized. Hello, McTooth. Lads. There's no thing sadder than the death of a friend. Young life don't to waste. Yes. Right. This place has deteriorated rather badly. I'm afraid Williams Creek is no place for a gentleman. Would you say so, Mr. Vowell? Where are you going? Straight over the mountain. The Edmonton. That's where the gold is, laddie. You can be the first or the last, have the cream or the crumbs, depending on what you're made of. Do you know the way? Like my granny's garden. Here, lad. Would you care to join me? I'd consider an association with a proven survivor like yourself. What do you think, Arthur? What seems to be the matter, Mr. Bowl? Um, we'll be with you straight. What is it, Arthur? Forgive me, John. What do you mean? Uh, I haven't the stomach for it. Will you go ahead. Uh, I think I've had enough adventure for one lifetime. So, it's over then? I'll give you half an hour at the back. I want you to have these. They were grandmothers. I meant to read them, but I haven't had the time. Thank you. Goodbye, Arthur. Goodbye, John.
Çöl. There are good friends and there are bad. And in trust, you find treason. Who said that? I don't know. Nor do I. Justice has been done, lad. Mr. Gilchrist, he's playing solitaire now. It's cool, Eddie. Just a simple little ditty in a good old Irish way. I give the world to hear her sing that song to me this day. Twas tour a lure a lure. Where is Edmonton exactly? Northeast, bloody, more or less. Has anyone done this before? Going east? Indians. Metis, perhaps. Metis? Half breeds. French and Indian, the worst of both worlds. You sure we have to go over these mountains? Hey, laddie, trust me, I know the way. Like your granny's garden. Despite all your talk, you don't know where the hell you're going, so I'm going to lead the way for a while. Well, the mountain has two sides. Couldn't tell a mastiff from a poodle anyway. Come on. This looks more like it to me. garden. Horse is lost. If we don't get down from here, we'll freeze. Shut up, you weak piece of shit. We've got to figure our position. We'll know where. That's our fucking position, and we're going to die. Get a hold of yourself. We'll find a way out. Good, I hate your kind. You piss-confident little bastard. My kind? And what is my kind, Scotsman? You're a wee middle-class animal trying to get ahead, laddie. I chew up your kind like kippers for breakfast. Oh. Now, you should watch your big mouth, sir. On the other hand, I, I do like you.
find food. Then kill something, lad. Should come natural to you. I said I was a soldier. I was not a killer. Subtle distinction. What the hell does one eat in this country? Buffalo. Stupidest animal alive. I can't be as stupid as you. We must be 300 miles south. Well, that's a minor miscalculation. It could happen to anyone. Minor miscalculation. I've met some dangerous jackasses in my life. But never... Ah! Ah! Bagpipes. I think we strayed where we weren't welcome, my prince. Why didn't they finish us off? Who knows what goes on in the mind of savages? Life is just a game to them, you know. Maybe they just thought you weren't worth the extra effort. How does it look? To tell you the truth, lad, I don't know what to do for you. coming out that way, lad. It'll have to be like this. No! Push it through! Jesus, no, it might go through something important. Oh, no! More ideas, lady? Whiskey. Whiskey. Clean the wood. Well, I'm dead for sure. I drank all the whiskey last week, I'm afraid. <laughs> What's that? Turpentine. Oh, oh, no. It's worth a try. You want to pour that into me? I don't know. What do you think? Is there an alternative? Hi, lady. And it's painless. I'll see that you don't feel a thing. Pour it in. You're a glutton for punishment. Just pour it in, will you? Oh. <sighs> 
faithful friend is the medicine of life. A faithful friend is the medicine of life. I've left you the gun, laddie. I've gone off into the wilderness with nothing but my wits to survive on. Good luck to you. Oh, my dude. You traitor! English. Como vous appelez vous, monsieur? Uh, Brown. John Brown. Gabriel Dumont. D'où venez-vous? Yeah. Sur la Vous tenez? Come on. Kutene. The one who come from the West. Kutene. Oh, yes, I suppose so. Kutene. Did my tooth send you? Oui. Not a good man to owe your life to, monsieur. <laughs> For the next month, it was her face I saw through the shadow of death. Every day she was there. First I could walk. Then I could ride. She was the reason for it all. As I became acquainted with her people, it occurred to me for the first time that I could live without gold. The Métis were descended from white traders and Indians. By day, they followed the huge buffalo herds from the south. By night, they read and danced and laughed like Frenchmen. Their life was perfect for the new world. But of course, that was before everything changed. Good to meet you, man. Oui, d'accord. You have need of a woman, no? What? You need a woman, no? No, probably too. Good to meet you. You do not need a woman? I need a woman. <laughs> Oh, 
You don't want to dance? sum up the picture so far, Mr. Brown. We have a tribe of half-breeds, the progeny of savages and Frenchmen. We have an ex-officer who should know better than to consort with these mongrels in some barbaric form of marriage. You could put it that way, sir. Or you could say that a British officer finally secured a respectable situation. stretched from one horizon to the other. Now the prairies were practically empty, and we searched out the few that were left. This way. Allez! Come on! To the Métis, they meant food, shelter, and money. To lose the buffalo was to them unimaginable. You might as well try to wipe out the fish in the sea. Each spring, the herds were a fraction of what they'd been last fall. Some thought it was the railroad driving them south. Some thought it was God teaching us to be patient and have faith. I knew what it was, but I couldn't bring myself to say it. How do you tell a people that they are going to disappear? The buffalo, they will come back. How do you know? Jumeau says so. What if they're gone forever? That's not possible. Hello? 
Blanc, blanc, elle la va. Tooth. Did you care to join me? No. No. Uh, you're a proud people. I like that. Good day to you, Mr. Dumont. Would you care for a bite or a wee drink? No, merci. Mr. Brown, I see you've survived yet again. But are you a gentleman yet, I wonder? <laughs> Aren't I dressed like one? What happened? Oh, a wee spot of trouble with the savages. It's an occupational hazard, you might say. <laughs> Still searching for gold? Oh, I found the gold, laddie, in liquid form. And I'm on a wee enterprise I could use a man of your qualifications. What are my qualifications? Oh, no, so modest, laddie. A trained soldier, a speaker of foreign tongues, and a proven survivor. Okay, you'd be a godsend to a poor, crippled businessman like myself. I'm here to offer you a partnership in a thriving venture. In six months, I'll make you rich. You have my word on it. <laughs> 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 so there's no way I'll leave my people now, McTooth. Your people is it? Oh, buddy. Be careful. Wishes can come through. And the face of starvation is nice and pretty. There's a new gold rush. And it's not nuggets, my prince. It's trade. Here, give me a hand up. You can be first or last. You can have the cream with the crumbs, depending on what you're made of. You said that in Williams Creek. All I got was an arrow in my back. And who saved your life? I. I miss you, lad. I miss you like I miss my own foot. And you owe me. Oh, I. You're a family man. I respect that. Good luck to you and your people. Sorry for the intrusion, ma'am. Gibbons Trading Post, Portage La Prairie, 850 miles east. Just in case you change your mind. Never. Whoa, Eddie. It's an ocean of money. You can sink or you can swim. Either way, you'll get wet. That's the best thing. God, always the children go first. They are not strong enough to fight when they get sick. Help us that are left, that we do not die quietly like this child. In Jesus' name, we ask this blessing. Amen. There's no 
nothing left to hunt. Without money, we'll all starve. I'll come back with some. Believe me, don't you? Please. men who marry our women for winter, then disappear in the spring, make a whore of her, and I will cut off your balls and make you eat them. Your English has improved. <laughs> I know you will be back, Kutney. Au revoir. Au revoir. Bientôt. Brown, Jim Gibbons. Welcome, Mr. Brown. Glad to have you with us. My man has army experience. Speaks heathen languages. Even married one of them. Hey. Hasn't gone native, though, I hope. Hey, Billy? Billy! Draw Mr. Brown a bath. He's been sleeping with savages. Mr. Gibbons, I prefer it if you didn't talk about my people in those terms. You have gone native, haven't you? Well, don't worry. You'll get over it. Feel that. Give me a hand back on with my leg. Will you? Furs. An Indian could buy any one of a number of things at Gibbon's trading post. A gun and ammunition, a season supply of food and blankets. Or an Indian could buy two jugs of whiskey, watered down, of course, to keep it from burning through the stomach. Gibbons liked to keep the overhead low and the profits high. There'll be a few more, boy. Ah, oh, that's much better. Isn't it, Matu? Aye, that's much better. Looked all right to me before you squashed him down. Yes, of course. Aye, it's a goodwill gesture. Here's your whiskey, boy. Don't ever do that again. Why don't you go back to your squaw? Easy, laddie. You're a civilized man. Remember. Just 
Starving Wolf was chief of the Soto. He liked to drink. The other Plains Indians stayed away from him. You never knew what he might do. A typical savage, in other words. Present company accepted, ma'am. Hold on, Mr. Brown. You claim to be a gentleman. But a gentleman does not sell whiskey to the savages. A gentleman can't let his people starve, sir. These are not your people. You are white, unless I'm mistaken. White, I may be. But in my mind, they were my people. Are my people, in fact. More drink. You give us more. How does the great chief intend to pay? Pay? Look, lynx, muskrat, all for drink. Can a man not drink all he needs for that price? <laughs> well, maybe just one for the road, eh? <laughs> you and I will drink to toast our friendship, and then you'll go. <laughs> Six, don't drink it yourself. What's in this? You've poisoned us, haven't you? Don't drink it. It's poison. Don't drink it. No, oh, you fool. Mr. Gibbons. No! I thought I'd just have to live with what I'd done, or not done. seemed impossible. In my mind, I wasn't a white man anymore, and after this, I was nothing. In my absence, more children had died, and there would be more to come. As the village broke up to continue its wandering, I could see the future, and I wanted no part of it. I didn't belong with them anymore. They've taken it all. White people. Barbed wire, railway track. Split it up among themselves. You think that is right, Kutene? If you fight them, they'll call you savage and hunt you down. You can't win. <laughs> it's not the winning. Now it is a matter of honor. Maybe you do not see it the same way, huh? My place is with my family. I respect your decision. 
Dumont would form an army, fight for a separate country for the Métis people. I didn't have the stomach for any more blood. It was very hard for my wife, for Dumont had been like a father to her. But she'd made her decision to stay with me. Gabriel, she's power. them go, we somehow knew we'd never see them again. So we carried on. Every day we told ourselves things would get better. The way we told ourselves the buffalo would come back. Now see, all we have to do is put it through the hole, pull tight, and we're done. Wolfers started coming out early that year. One animal disappears, another takes its place. Kudne, c'est lui. Reunited again, my prince. Let me introduce you to my associate, Mr. Frost. I told you once, I never want to see you again. Now, laddie, you've only got your friends when times get tough. You ran into a little trouble at the trading post, remember? I lost my fingers. Have you told your lovely wife about that incident? Shocking it was, Mr. Frost. Over my tooth. Well, Letty, as I see it, you've got two choices. You can either forgive or forget, or you can turn your back on your friends and probably see your sweet little family all dead by spring. I'd rather see them dead. Oh, don't be so poetic, Mr. Brown. There are wolvers all over. Profitable enterprise, competition's very keen. Terrible things can happen to a woman and a child at the hands of such men. Things that you wouldn't even dream of. Why, MacTooth? Friendship, buddy. Pure friendship. I love you, buddy. Now we'll take that empty shack. Do our business, turn a nice little profit, all neat and tidy, and then we'll say goodbye. Now, Letty, if you say no to your old friend McTooth now, well, I can leave vouch for the indignation of my colleague. It's a nasty bit of business. No, Letty. You and I are just like that. So we were in the business of wolfing now. The Americans pay two fifty dollars apiece for the skins, and a team of wolfers can average a 1000 a year. At first we shot them, but bullets are expensive. It's far more cost efficient to poison them with strychnine. How I go fishing? I bait my hook. Then I go down to the river and I stick my arm into the water. He 
here you go, Reddy. Here's a treat. Go on outside and play. Cabin. We made your deal on the food. What do you take for sharing the woman? It's all money, isn't it, Kudne? Even me? How does fifty dollars sound? We'll use her till spring. Won't hurt her one bit. No, Penny! Penny! Look what you're doing! He's not perfect! Listen to me! Don't turn yourself into a murderer in front of your family. You're a gentleman, a Christian. A son any mother would be proud of. Go get him out of here. Just get him out. Sorry, lady, you'll never see his face again. I gave him my word on it. Stupid fuck. Get him. Don't worry, laddie. You stay out here for a couple of days. Here, have a drink. In the meantime, I'll take care of your interests, and everything will be back to normal. Hey. See that lapels are wider this year, Mr. Brown. We're going to have to spruce up our wardrobe, isn't that right, Lassie? Jeez. How can those people live like that? Here's your price. But the bank is closed. Leave the skins with me and pick the money up first thing in the morning. I'd prefer not to do it that way, sir. I'm trust a wet man, huh? All right, McTooth. Bring him in the morning. You and your associate here can uh, get a deal. Always a pleasure, Felix. I'll keep him till morning. Well, of course, laddie. You know I trust you. He was like a tick that grabs onto your skin and sucks the blood, swells red and fat in the good times, holds on through the bad. And he'd never let go until all the blood was gone. the Colt 45, my friend. Field tested in Mexico by the U.S. Army. No finer weapon made. What do I tell your squaw man when he gets here? You don't know a thing, laddie. The last time you saw me was yesterday. All 
No. Two hundred dollars. Those people can't go wild. Don't talk to me about taking a risk when you're robbing me blind. I'll give you 150 for it, not a penny more. You were paid fair dollar for those skins, McTooth. Take it. Hope it pays for your damn funeral. And a good day to you, sir. Jump to conclusions. We can talk about this, surely. We can come to a settlement. After all, we're civilized men, we're gentlemen, we're not wild beasts. Here's your money, laddie. It's yours. Take it. A happy man who sees his family. Savage. I did what I had to do to survive. Nothing survived. Nothing. Is that all, Mr. Brown? You may stand down. Does someone have something to say for the accused, or is all testimony finished? I would like to address the court. Who might you be? Arthur Vole. I'm the Gold Commissioner for the British Columbia Territories. You have something to contribute to these proceedings, Mr. Vole? Yes, I do. Take the stand. Place your hand on the book. Continue. I was a witness to the killing of a young American miner named Jim Blesson in a saloon in Williams Creek. Jim Blesson was murdered and robbed by Evan Campbell, known as McTooth. I know. I saw it. No. Not possible. You would have told me. Order. Order. I would have known. You are out of order, Mr. Brown. It was McTooth, John. I know it was. You stood silently by and watched your best friend go into partnership with a murderer? My goodness, Mr. Bull. If that is true, heaven help the Gold Commission. You're making me out to be a monster, sir when all I did was what any ordinary person would do. You weren't there, sir. You don't know what it was like. 
when something like that happens to me, you can't believe your own eyes. You can't say your own name for certain. Yet you are certain now. Years later, you are certain. I'd give anything. I'd give anything to be as certain then as I am now. I suppose if you had, none of this would have happened. Oh, yes, it would. It would have happened if we never left Ireland. It just wouldn't have happened to us. Thank you, Mr. Bull. I appreciate your coming here. On Mr. Brown's behalf, you may stand down. I'm so sorry, John. It's all right, Arthur. It was a long time ago. It wasn't anybody's fault, you know. It was history. Thanks for coming forward. arrived at a verdict, Your Honor. I have not asked you for a verdict yet, Mr. Foreman. Well, we got one anyway, so you might as well listen. The man's not guilty. How do you know that? Well, he was protecting his property. The deceased stole Brown's wolfskins. Brown stabbed him and he died. Just as simple as that. I see. Order, order. Kootenay Brown, you will stand. The jury thinks a few wolf pelts made a good enough reason for you to kill even Campbell. It is not my wish to agree with them, but I have to. Private property. The law is built on it. The country is built on it. Means you can kill a man in cold blood and get away with it. You are dismissed. Well, what are you all staring at? Have you no private property to go home to? I said dismissed. Dismissed. I have work to do. Mr. Brown, don't you and your family come back to Fort Pitt anymore? A lot of wilderness out there, sir. I think that's where you belong. <laughs> 